Right. So if you have read and understood, considering it's surgical pathology station, kindly tell me what is your provisional diagnosis to begin with. This is a case of uh, maybe septicemia. Okay. How you came up to this diagnosis? Uh, because this patient is a, a known case of hepatitis C and she, he has gone and underwent splenectomy. That's why uh, and there is uh, several blood loss with blood transfusion. Now she is febrile with respiratory rate more than 44, heart rate 129. These are uh, features of sepsis. What are the what are the other features of sepsis that you will consider? Uh, sepsis, uh, but the blood uh, pressure is uh, raised. But the other things uh, like uh, hypovolemic and sepsis, septicemia, there is heart rate is increased more than ninety. Then respiratory rate is more than twenty. And temperature is more than 36, 38 degrees Celsius or less than 34 degrees Celsius. All right. Have you heard of the term disseminated intravascular coagulation? How would you define that? Yes, yes it is a pathological coagulative, uh, coagulative uh, consumption coagulopathy where the, there is a simultaneous uh, consumption, uh, simultaneous. Uh, Coagulation and fibrolysis occur due to consumption of the clotting factors and uh, platelets. platelets. Okay. Uh, yes. It and it is characterized by what? It is characterized by uh, widespread uh, minute blood clot. There is increase uh, increase fibrin degradation product, decrease uh, fibrinogen, decrease platelet. Yes. All right, all right. If you can tell me, uh, considering DIC, what are the what are the functions of the platelets? Yes, function uh, platelets causes primary uh, clot formation. That is the platelet plug formation, activation of these platelets, and then there is release of release of some substance like adenosine diphosphate and other things that will activate the platelets, and adherence of more platelet occur which will cause ultimately the platelet plug formation. This is the primary. Cons uh, Very good. Considering the this case, this particular case, can you tell me what are the contributing factors which has led to this condition? Yes, there are uh, splenic injury which causes a and lot of blood, blood loss. A splenic and injury so, and then how in the presence of hepatitis C it would lead to more yes hepatitis c could uh, cause the dissemination disseminated How? intravascular it causes yes. what uh, is the liver affection occur yes so the clotting factors are not uh cannot be so bleeding tendency increases bleeding yes tendency increases. clotting factors increases. are not produced and then that also leads or contributes to this condition very good can you please tell me uh right these uh, the clotting factors which are dependent on liver and which are deficient because patient suffers from hepatitis C affects which pathway of coagulation? Uh, intrinsic or uh, extrinsic? Extrinsic pathway is extrinsic, extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic, pathway. yes, because yes. intrinsic pathway is activated because of just the vessel injury. Vessel injury, yes. Uh, yes, all right, very good. Can you tell me, uh, right, this patient, all right, okay, how would you, after you have confirmed your diagnosis, how would you plan to manage this patient? Yes, I have to manage this patient in uh, ITU uh, after discussing with the multidisciplinary team general surgeons, uh, uh, hematologist, pathologist, and... Yes, and? I, I do register. Yes, and uh, And I, I have to, I have to uh, follow the ABCD protocol, and uh, I have to maintain the patient's... As the patient is confused, and uh, I have to maintain his air, uh, her airway and breathing yes. circulation, and, and her urine output is also decreased, so... Oh, I have to uh, catheterize and monitor her urine output. I have to put her on IV fluids, and yes. I have to check uh, her blood hemoglobin levels and 
uh, I'll send blood for hemoglobin and grouping and cross matching. Cross matching, do... all right. Okay, how would you decide or how would you determine how much blood units she should be trans transfused? Yes, yes, that could, that is uh, decided according to the uh, the uh, classification of the uh, blood loss. There is it is. Uh, how in, would you determine this... the loss of blood? Yes, uh, the like in class one there is fifteen percent of blood loss. In class two there is fifteen. Considering the yes the vitals of this patient and the all the all the steps that the patient has been through, uh, how would you evaluate or assess what is the blood loss level of this particular patient? Yes, I would say it, uh, this patient is having class three hem yes, uh, hypovolemic or hemorrhagic. Yes. yes. Okay, uh, when considering uh, the blood transfusion, what are the th things that you'll consider or what are the tests that matters? Yes, I, yes I, AVN, RH, blood grouping. Okay. Right. And cross-matching. Yes, cross-matching as well. Okay, uh, can you tell me which um, antigen is important in cross-matching? Which uh, antigen, antigen. cross-matching? Yes. ABO. ABO, very good. All right. Can you please tell me uh, which blood blood product can you can uh, you can give in if you do not want to give uh, whole blood? Yes, we can give uh, packed red cell, and then we can give type precipitate or fresh frozen plasma, liquid okay. reduced RBC. Yes. Can you please tell me uh, what is the lifespan of uh, red blood cells? 120 days. 120 days. Okay. Good. Can you please tell me, uh, right, when this patient had to undergo splenectomy, how would that affect the patient? Yes, spleen is, uh, as we know, spleen is, has the has, uh, immune function and blood storage. So if this patient uh, undergo under undergo splenectomy, we should uh, put her on on prophylactic antibiotics for lifelong, and we should uh, vaccinate her post uh, splenectomy within fourteen days. Yes. For pneumococcus, meningococcus. Considering that the patient had a fracture which was fixed, how would that affect the healing of the of the patient of the bone? Fracture, that has occurred. Uh, <clears throat> the bone healing will be delayed because of this multi organ involvement. Yes. And uh, um, yes. So and... we should use uh, a broad spectrum antibiotics and uh, we should uh, maintain uh, strict aseptic precautions during this, uh, during this uh, fracture fixation. Yes. And what this, else would this might, affect? This, this might lead to uh, infection of the bones, like, which may cause osteomyelitis. Okay, we'll not go that far. You said uh, healing will be delayed, and because the patient will not be mobile for so long, so also that will also prolong the. It will also lead to loss of bone density, and it will also lead to delayed. Even more, because that will increase osteoporosis, and that will, in return, lead to decrease or delayed bone healing. All these factors. Yes. So Bell is gone. Yes, you talked about osteomyelitis. Which, uh, what is the most common organism that leads to or causes osteomyelitis? Last Step for us. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.